Hi everybody. Um, I decided to make a vlog post today because it's just way easier to tell you everything that's been going on rather than type it all. Um, if you've been reading my blog for a while, uh, me and we, um, you'll know that I have suffered from depression um, pretty much since I was like 16 or so and I'm 36 now. Um, so when I got pregnant this third time around, I had been taking Paxil, which one of my previous posts, I spoke about how I had to quit the Paxil the day I found out I was pregnant. So I quit the Paxil and um, went through like two to three weeks or so of withdrawal, which was really horrible. I was really sick, had really horrible night sweats, um, couldn't drive, had vertigo. It was awful. Um, and so then I went for several months of my pregnancy, not on any kind of antidepressant, just because I was really nervous about taking medication and having it harm the baby. I was terrified. Like, that was my biggest fear. And I thought, I'll just suffer if it means not having any danger to the baby. Um, and so I found out I was pregnant around May and I ended up around August, I was around my fourth to fifth month, um, where I started getting extremely, extremely, um, moody, really, really like solemn, melancholy, sad, lonely, um, just overall just feeling awful. I had no motivation, none. I couldn't get off the couch. I had all these big plans and couldn't do anything. Um, I had so many goals that I just couldn't even launch. Um, I just, it was all I could do to get out of bed each day, just to function and take care of the kids and do what I needed to do around the house. And even then I couldn't do it. And it got worse and it got worse. And then um, I noticed that I started feeling like um, that I wasn't a good mom anymore and that the kids would be better off without me. I started thinking, you know, there was like this voice in my head and the voice is saying, you know, your kids need a better mother. They'd be better off with someone who could be there for them and be happy all the time and have lots of fun and plans and not so like depressed all the time and sad and tired. And, um, and then I thought, you know, I started thinking your husband needs a better wife, someone who's more fun than you, someone who's more interesting, someone who's more exciting. Um, and they were just horrible thoughts that just kept like eating away in my mind. Um, and I just couldn't stop thinking about them. And then, but at the same time, there was like another voice, which was like more me saying, no, that's not true. I'm a good mom. This isn't who I am. This isn't me. This is just like a mirage. This is just a temporary feeling. Um, I'm not like this all the time. I know I can fix it. And that was kind of like the angel voice. And then I had like a demon voice, not a voice, but like your conscience, your voice that speaks to you from inside. It was like I had two, like one was really mean and negative and attacking me. And the other one was really sort of like true to who I am trying to defend myself from this other sort of voice that was just out to get me. And it was terrifying. I was scared all the time. Like, what is this? being doing to me and it was just incredibly awful I would not wish it on my worst enemy I started obsessing about like just what if I weren't here everyone's doing great without me they don't need me here um so I told my husband about my feelings. I was crying, trying to eat dinner, and I just was so emotional. And I told him, I said, I have all these horrible thoughts. I kept staring at the knife butcher block with all the knives, like it was like a compulsion. Um, it was just, you know, and I'm not a suicidal person, but I was just compelled staring at the knives, thinking I could just take care of things so quick right now. Um, it was just this weird 
compulsion that I had never felt before and it terrified me. And I said, that's it. Like, I'm not doing this anymore. I need help. I need medication. So, you know, Chris suggested we, we decided we could either go to the hospital that night or we could just, you know, try to figure it out. So I thought, okay, well, I... I know that this isn't real. I've been through this before. Um, it's a chemical reaction. Something's going on. I can do this. I just need to talk to the doctor. So I called my OB and explained what was going on. And he ended up getting a prescription right away um, for Zoloft for me. And um, I went right away and he said, you have to find a psychiatrist who's going to work with you through your pregnancy. And he gave me a few names. And um, so I ended up that very day filling the prescription for Zoloft and I started taking it. And I spoke with a psychiatrist that he'd recommended and made an appointment with her. And then I also called my therapist, who I have been seeing for the past five years since my postpartum depression with Paige. Um, so I called her and told her what was going on just so I had someone else who was in the know of what was going on with me. So I had a support team. I've had my husband, I have the psychiatrist who deals with the medication side, and then I have a therapist who deals with more with the emotional side, making sure I'm okay. Um, now I felt like my whole team was involved in supporting me, and I think that that's made all the difference. Um, so I really think that anyone who might be suffering with depression, especially during pregnancy, get help. Um, it's out there. People are willing to help you. It was, ended up being easier than I thought. Uh, the Zoloft, while not perfect and it does have risks, um, they told me that tons of people take it during pregnancy and it usually works out fine. I still was scared, I'll admit, and I felt terrible, but I feel like the risks, um, you know, outweighed the danger. You know, like I felt like if I didn't take it, I didn't want to know what would happen to me. I just feel like it's healthier to be on something and function for your family. So that's the route I took. And within about three weeks, I, I, it was like the clouds lifted. I felt like a new person. I had motivation. I had, I could sleep at night. I wasn't tired during the day. I wasn't logy. I had energy. I was excited about life. I felt normal. I felt energized. I felt excited about each day. And um, I really credit the Zola for that. I started out at, I think, 50 milligrams. Eventually, I moved to 75. And I think now I'm going to be starting on 100. And I think they tend to dose up to 250. So um, I'm on a low dose right now. But it was enough to just get me going, get me out of that mindset, give me that kick I needed. And I feel like me, uh, how I used to be, how I remember feeling. I feel good. I feel excited. I have enthusiasm for things again. Um, and when I have a plan, I can carry it out. I can get off the couch. I can follow through on the things. I want to do. So it's really made a huge difference in my life. So um, while it was horrible to go through at the time, uh, I'm really glad that I got the help I needed and spoke to my doctor and found a support team who could help me that they check in with me. And um, I was able to get through the entire rest of my pregnancy um, with support and feeling good and I didn't have to suffer and I'm just really glad that I didn't and I didn't just choose to to hope and wait I think these are it's an illness depression anxiety all those kinds of things are an illness um, you know if someone has cancer you don't go up to them while they're laying in their bed and you don't just say hey get up let's go just you know shake it off you realize that they're ill and they're fighting and they need medication and a support team and help and that they're doing their best and I think depression and um, the kinds of things that that entails um, is a similar sort of thing where, you know, when someone is sick with it, they can't help themselves. They get to a point where they just don't have the get up and go. It's just, they need help. It's like a car that won't run. Um, and I think that's at least how it felt for me. Um, and I think the medication is what gave me that start and got me running again. Um, it's almost like a, um, getting jumper cables and starting the car. Um, 
And so I just wanted to share my story in case it could help anybody else out there going through any kind of depression or um, any kind of antepartum depression, depression while pregnant. Um, I just had my baby boy um, two weeks ago and he's very healthy. Um, the, the Zoloft didn't have any ill effects on him at all. And he grew really well and big. He was almost nine pounds when he was born and 22 and a half inches long. Um, so I'm just happy to say that everything worked out and I didn't suffer this time around because I did through my pregnancy with Noah and that was hard. Um, and I just wish I hadn't needlessly put myself through such torture. Um, so that's it. I just wanted to share my story and it was just too much to type on the blog. I thought I, I could type this, but I really don't have time with three kids now to sit and type away. I figured I'll just tell the story <laughs> and let everybody just, you know, listen to me live. Um, so anyway, I hope that helps anybody who might be going through this sort of same thing. And um, please just feel free to comment below if um, you have any questions about my story and if there's anything I can do to help you. Um, I hope all is well and I will talk to you later. Bye everybody.